how you guys doing? It's been a while since we've done a weekend review, and you know, I mean, because we're you know we're kind of at some BS tracks lately, to where I don't really you know have much interest or playing or caring. Like we were at Atlanta, and then we were at Circuit of the Americas. You know, I'm not going to bother doing weekend recaps of my approach on races that I don't play a lot of. I'm not comfortable with Atlanta. I think that is just wildly uh, insane, especially if the leader is going to be able to just maintain track position for a majority of it. That's going to be nuts. Uh, road courses, I'm not going to enter a lot of. I just frankly don't give a shit about the road courses and stuff. So we were at Richmond this weekend, or we were at Richmond in Texas this weekend. Then we have Bristol next weekend. Probably not going to do one. Probably not going to play a lot. Just that's its own animal. Then we got Talladega later th later this month. I'm not going to do one for that. You know, everybody understands how I approach things there. So really, it's just this one, Martinsville and Dover, that I'll make these review videos for and stuff like that. So let's just kind of go through my... Uh, just my personal weekend, just because I like sharing and, and, you know, whether it's good or bad, I just like being transparent. Nobody can, you know, say that I'm not putting my money where my mouth is. Everything I say I'm going to do in the videos is what I do uh, here. We can talk League of Legends and F1, but I don't I don't cover either one of those. So we can fact maybe we'll factor those in at the end, whatever. And typically, I just plan on just covering the NASCAR approaches just because that's what I do videos for. Anyway, uh, Xfinity at Richmond, absolutely uh, you know, uh, stupidity of epic proportions from Joe Gibbs Racing. I couldn't believe it, couldn't understand it. I was absolutely floored. I'm not even, I'm not even mad, just because that was so. I mean, of course, I'm, I'm, you know, very annoyed, but that was so stupid. I can't even be mad. It, it was like it blew my brain of how dumb uh jgr was by just keeping their drivers out in the start i don't know i couldn't i couldn't believe it i was 100 percent on zane smith 100 percent on nemechek they had the fastest cars all day it was insane nemechek you know he has to drive through the field but it was i mean nemechek had the best car had the best car in traffic got through the field should have won the race i don't know why they're like if you're the lead car you don't have to do galaxy brain strategies just run your race be in control don't just just hand you i can't believe they put themselves lap down and sammy smith as well he was a lap down but he was basically running in the 11th position all day because he had to start the rear every single restart and drive through and that's with going through the lap traffic as well sammy smith had fantastic track speed in practice that's just how it was and the reason why i went with these guys was purely based on on well, not purely based on but just based on phoenix i was really floored that all guy really was that popular and if you were watching the live show at the time you got to see us kind of go through ownership together um that was just kind of interesting everybody else was pretty much on par but this is mainly where i ended up uh going and stuff here i played smith i played mason here but these are the lines this is how much i left over um i think i had three or four of these cash I don't remember. Um, let me go look real fast. No, my bad. I had I had two of these, two of these cash. Which uh, at that point, I mean, I'm gonna take anything. Uh, you know, un, un, just fucking unfortunate, man. I truly believe I had nuts. I, I mean, everything pointed to it. Everything before the race pointed to it. Everything during the race pointed to it. Sammy Smith and Nemechek were the right plays. You know, you're gonna have bad bad breaks. Uh, and just stupidity from from teams, but I I have absolutely no regrets. I'm very happy with the approach. This is a situation to where, yeah, you know, I only have two lines cash. When I look at the approach, was it the was it the right approach? Absolutely, absolutely. I am perfectly happy with with the approach. I have I have absolutely no regrets. It's going to happen here and there anyway. So um, we'll just move on from yeah the Xfinity stuff. When we look at the truck series. Um, this is where we were at here. Yet again, I just wasn't really liking the truck series race. Uh, I figured it'd be a bit stupid, which it, it got wildly stupid at the end. That was insane. Uh, the fact that I had three lineups cash here, uh, very happy. Uh, and this one was the lineup that was actually going to compete to possibly be the winning lineup in the $10 this was the du this was a double punt lineup and this actually still ended up being my best lineup this one finished 352nd however before Eckes, Zane Smith and 
Nick wrecked because all three of these guys finished 14th, 15th, 16th, 13th, 21st, and 22nd from the double punt plays here. Um, this lineup was competing to be 9th, I believe. I think it was like 9th or 7th coming to the very end. I mean, actually, I believe it was higher than Crafton got involved in the wreck. Somehow he didn't even wreck out. Um, but this was actually ended up being a pretty... Or this was this was being a, a pretty decent day, uh, despite the fact that I had top three running guys wreck on the last lap and finish outside the top ten. And again, I'll take the uh, the three random lineups cashing from that pretty pretty wild race, pretty brutal uh, race. Um, Jack Wood, I mean, we could just I mean, this was it. You know, the guy truly doesn't have the talent. Whereas Dean Thompson is, and this is I had been on the fence, not on the fence, but. Both races, all the truck races this year, I've played Dean Thompson and Jack Woods, seeing which one would you know pop off eventually. And whatnot. And this is one where I was like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm just going to go you know, between these two guys. I'm going to go all in on, on Jack Woody starting second. He has the biggest likelihood to perform if he's going to here. Clearly doesn't. And uh, Dean Thompson showed amazing speed, um, and then he died. So that was unfortunate there for him. Didn't have any. But uh, it seems that the Tricon group is just way better than what KBM has I, I, in terms of Jack Wood and, and what they're giving Jack Wood and what they're giving Dean Thompson. I think they're giving, I think Dean Thompson probably actually has more skill than Jack Wood, and that might be a reason why. Um, but this is just kind of, this kind of where we're at. The main reason why I went with Josh Ryum so much is you're going to notice with these lines here, I would, I didn't even put the damn price. That's unfortunate. That sucks. Um, you can see the salaries here were pretty. Uh, pretty tight at the bottom, and I just didn't want to pay up for a worse place differential plays like Mason Massey. I'd rather just play Josh Ream here, and he was in the 22 car. Um, Spencer Boyd started last. You know, uh, a lot of people went with him. Anyway, I, you know, even Nick here, I'm going to say that we should all be pretty floored by how fast this car is. They're bringing a lot of speed to the track. Um, I am. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Really, really impressed by what this two car has. What this two truck has. Darn shame that actual truck was destroyed. Not sure. I'm sure. I'm sure the chassis is fine, but that was a that was a flying machine that just got absolutely destroyed. Same thing with Ekus. I mean, look, Ekus is 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 real, man. As I said, entering this race, he's real. You know, the the win at Atlanta is what pushed him there. It's what this car has and what they're bringing. We saw Jake Garcia up there as well. Uh, Zane Smith and front row were easily able to recover. And you could say that the yellows and them helped them out, but still 16 fast laps and never once having the lead is, is great to see from Zane Smith, despite the fact that he came off the trailer so slow. Um, what What is interesting is we lost just a huge amount of fast laps. I know Nick didn't get them all, but the fact that he only has 40 fast laps out of the 168 laps led from him is uh, is pretty huge that place differential came through that uh, that wildly congratulations on Haley Deegan I'm glad that she finally finished a race and uh, uh, it's a real side note a real real quick rant real fast I don't understand why another manufacturer hasn't picked her up because this truck series field is honestly pretty dog shit uh, the skill level is pretty low and I think it really is hindering what the perception is of Haley Deegan because if you go back and look at that Xfinity Series race last year she was through the field had a ton of confidence in the car and even here like Thor I mean I know uh you know Ben Rhodes was was trying to do stuff in this race here and there but uh it seems that Thor Sport really has taken a step back and I don't know if it's her contract with Ford that's limited limiting her to staying in the trucks because we don't really have any Ford's drivers or spaces in, in the Xfinity Series it's certainly not in the Cup Series, unless she really does replace Harvick. But I think Haley Deegan would work or would perform way better in the Xfinity Series and perform way better with a different manufacturer than Ford. I think that Ford contract is really hindering her, but I'm glad that she finally got a top five finish or top six finish here. Um, and that was really it for uh, the Truck Series race. So, you know, both races that afternoon, you know, ended up going... <laughs> Poorly in a poorly in a in a return standpoint, but I'm I'm truck race. I'm not as happy with the approach. I probably should have realized that Nick was going to have more speed. I probably should have 
done the exact same thing that I did with Ekus and said that Nick is going to have to speak because he's, he's been up there. I was just, I, I was mainly concerned at how he ran at Las Vegas. And we saw that Nick just was too tight in the draft and made mistakes at Vegas when he was racing up front with, uh, you know, Kyle Busch and everybody up there. And I was very, I was just hesitant on playing, on, on playing Nick. So, you know, I mean, understand that they just, they just have the speed. Another thing here this weekend is we're, we're seeing a lot of like nine K guys, maybe not Sammy Smith, but like Nick was starting first, you know, Chastain was, was underpriced. Bowman was underpriced in my opinion. And, uh, it was a very easy way to get multiple lap leaders in these races. Anyway, when we look at the cup series, these are the lines that I end up going with. As I said, I was very bullish and this was a, this was pretty major, um, I don't normally play in as many contests as I did here, but when I, so I didn't, I didn't listen to anybody, you know, this weekend or this week until I did all my stuff. So I did my, my, my show and based on the questions, I was like, okay, you know, I'm kind of, I got to kind of be in left field compared to a lot of people. Cause if they're building the way that I'm building with, I'm getting questions sent my way that I'm not even having to debate. Cause I'm not even in that price range or whatever. Um, and then I was in the True DFS Discord, and somebody asked me a question of like, "Hey, what are these drivers?" And he he listed off like seven drivers, and I was like, "Dude, I don't have any of these guys. I don't have any Ryan Priest. I don't have any Austin Dillon. I don't have any Eric Amarola. You know, I'm like, why are people going this way? I don't think I have any Bell in the Cup Series. Why why are people going this way? Like, it should be Hendrick. It should. I I find it hard to believe that." Hendrick is not going to lead laps. They've been extremely fast. Chevys have been extremely fast. Maybe maybe Toyota gets there late in the race on pit strategy or something, but, uh, I mean, I, I just can't really fathom. I mean, I'll play some Hamlin, but I'm not going to be really overweight. I want to just target people starting up front. And, you know, everybody went through the whole song and dance there, and I am I am honestly, and I typed in the Discord, before we got that last yellow uh, from Reddick, I, I hadn't, I wasn't losing any money at all. And I am, yet again, same thing with, with the Xfinity Series race at Richmond. Very, very happy with my approach. Very happy with, honestly, just completely floored with the ownership. I don't understand why Larson was 17% owned. I don't understand why William Byron was 26% owned. I don't understand why Alex Bowman was 17% owned. And you could argue that Alex, you know, basically hindered you. But the fact that he was hovering right around 40 points to 46 points nearly all day, I mean, that's great to see. The fact that he, every, go back and look at every pit stop, he gained two to three positions based on his uh, his pit stall. You know, these are things that you need to look at. The fact that Chastain was, where's, where's Chastain in ownership? Ronald Chastain was 17% owned. I couldn't believe it, man. I I was like, what the fuck are people doing? What are we looking at here? And so anyway, um, I'll show you how the weekend ended up going. But these are the lines that I ran. You know, I loved uh, Alex Bowman, Byron, and, and Larson. And it was a shame that Byron took over just a little slightly earlier compared to Bowman. But the fact, yet again, I reiterate, at least for my view, I want to have as many guys right in the top five as possible in these short tracks. And we're going to have people move up there. We're going to have people maintain the running position and stuff. I love Suarez. I was absolutely fucking baffled that Suarez wasn't played either. Uh, Suarez was 8% owned. Like, what the fuck, man? I am floored. I'm baffled. I couldn't believe it. Just couldn't believe it at all. Moment, bit of, bit of a miss there. But I'm, I'm very happy with this approach. Very happy with how things went. And as I said, I basically just played the same line 18 times. You know, did I play these guys back here? Yeah, I played some Ty Dillon, played some Chandler Smith. Um, but you can see the amount of money that I left over. This is why I just never even had, you know, questions related to Priest or Eric Amarola, things like that, whatever the case may be. I know I had Hamlin and yeah, I have one line here. Um, and this ended up being the, the best scoring line. And with Byron, because he scores, I think Byron ended with 50 points or so. He didn't. He didn't take the line. Like if you're, if you played Byron, you know that line wasn't destroyed with him getting spun. It certainly hurt itself being optimal. Um, but 
you know, I am, I am, I'm happy. I'm so happy with this approach. This is certainly weekends where, yeah, I probably could have had more Toyota drivers, but before Byron gets spun, you didn't, you didn't need them. You know, the fact that Byron gets spun and it forces, or not forces them, but it lets more people get through based on pricing. You know, and as I said, I reiterate that a lot in the live shows. You have to think of what the line of construction is doing because before that last yellow, actually the last two yellows, the optimal lineup has Larson, has Byron. They're very expensive drivers, so it's limiting the amount of place differential plays coming through and stuff. Shout out to, yet again, I mean, I, I don't mean to just, like, suck his dick and stuff. I just, look, these guys are great players. And when that yellow came out with Reddick, I was like, I'm going to see who's winning this contest. Motherfucking whistles go woo, man. He had it. Absolutely had it set. I'm telling you, what a force to be reckoned with. That guy is going to absolutely kill our shit in NASCAR DFS. Uh, and then, you know, Byron gets spun and he, you know, he loses that uh, lineup. But I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, these guys that are coming to play NASCAR are going to absolutely rock our shit, man. These guys know what they're doing. They're big money guys from MLB from NFL, they're playing NASCAR now. NASCAR is way harder to play. You have to take stands, and I believe at least, you know, make it, if you feel comfortable with your approaches and stuff, do it. Anywho, anyway, this is just kind of where I went. Um, like I said, Truex, man, probably probably should have had some Truex here. Probably should have had a little bit more Hamlin, but we kind of, at least for me, I'm trying to think what happens if Hamlin doesn't have that slow pit stop. That second to last pit stop. You know, because it moves him back and he gets stuck in the 20s. Which yet again, you can't pass. You just can't pass in these cars. Hamlin was leading the race. Had a great car. Had to start outside the top 20. Could have moved through the field. You can't fucking pass these cars. Track position was huge. It was absolutely huge. You know, why was Josh Berry and Michael McDowell up there? Because they stayed out and got lucky with the yellow. Um, and, and Barry fell into the absolute nuts with leading laps and, and staying out and getting lucky, but that's what, that's what happens there. But, uh, you, you just can't, you can't pass, man. You cannot pass in these cars. And the people that do have fast cars are either going to be starting up front or you should be able to clearly identify them, which was Suarez. I just, I couldn't believe that people didn't play Suarez. Didn't, couldn't believe it at all. Anywho. So this is how they went. As I said, I don't normally enter the secondary contest, but I was on my own fucking island. I didn't hear anybody else saying anything that I was even on. Um, somebody even commented on the YouTube video saying he just watched another YouTuber and we couldn't have more different approaches on this race. And so I was like, I mean, I think this is a leverage play. This has got to be one specifically based because I, not the regrets of chasing it, but you know, Xfinity series too. Uh, and people, you know, really lean on track history and showing how people are going to build lineups really truly based on track history here. They did not use, they didn't use recent history at all. They didn't use recent Phoenix running positions at all. Didn't make any sense here. Um, so this is how it went. The lowest amount winning all day. I had nearly every single line inside the cash line of, of all these contests and stuff. So I'm, I'm happy with the approach. Uh, and if Byron doesn't get spun here, we're still making at least a grand here. Uh, with that said, however, FanDuel came in clutch. Shout out to FanDuel. Um, so that's fine. I still made profit on, on the Sunday Cup Contest in general, or Sunday Slate in general. I think I finished third in the secondary nine here, which the payoff structure on FanDuel is even worse than DraftKings. But um, still had a pretty decent day on FanDuel. On F1 for the third race in a row, uh, we have played the second highest, right, Third highest line. Um, race race one, I played the third highest line. Race two, played the optimal. This one played the third one again, um, but it was actually probably my favorite line. And actually, here, I'll just bring it up on here so you can see. Uh, where are we at here? Man, I just, entering that fucking last restart, I was like, we just need Gasly. Just somebody pass gas, because the, the optimal was being separated before the big wreck. It was the one that was first, and then mine that was second and stuff. And the difference was Gasly. 
I need a Gasly to lose a position. And then I was going to land on the optimal lineup again. So during that last restart, I was like, dude, somebody just pass. Just pass Gasly, please. That's all I need. Just just pass Gasly. And, of course, they wrecked. And that whole bullshit answer, I mean, they're, man, F1 is worse than NASCAR sometimes with their rules and officiating and stuff. Secondly here, I can't reiterate enough that you have to approach F1 like like an eSport, and you really do. It's Projections, honest to God, don't matter. Like, uh, Sargent has no right to beat Anthony. Not Anthony. Uh, Alexander? Forgot his. Albon. He has no right to beat his teammate. No right to beat his teammate at all. Um, but because you're forced to get to Sargent to pay up for Max, to pay up for whether you were going with Alonzo. And even in the Discord here, as I said, I don't cover it, but I'll, I mean, I'll talk. I mean, F1 is just, it'd be a fucking terrible sport to write articles for, man. It's, it's honestly, I think covering F1 is still just a waste of time. You could very easily just cover it in like, few sentences in a discord anyway um just based on what max's price was you're gonna need him <clears throat> and you're gonna need red bull as a constructor yet again uh mercedes was probably gonna work until russell blew a motor and so the builds you know yet again you're you're forced to go with the constructor that's probably either going to be the best point per dollar or allow you to get to whatever you want to do and so in this race before Russell blew up, Mercedes was going to be optimal. And so I built with either Red Bull Constructor or uh, Mercedes Constructor. And then the captains were Zhao, uh, Hamilton, Verstappen. I had some science. I had some other guys, but that was that was the main focus of them. But like the winning or the, the winning lineup had Zhao as the captain, which I even Talked about this in the Discord as well. Um, Zhao has a real chance of being the captain due to the pricing. You'll just end up needing probably, you know, you're going to need Max, the best driver from Mercedes. And then I argued the best driver from Ferrari, but the fact that we had that wreck late in the race to put Norris finishing six, I'm pretty sure Science would have been uh, in the Zhao lineup. Because with, here, fuck it, I'll just show you mine, dude. What am I even doing? Uh, if this stuff helps you at all, you know, let's let's have it help people. If not, whatever. Um, here, let me let me bring up DraftKings real fast. Oh my God, dude! You only have sixty-one bucks in your in your thick. Relax, dude. Relax. I got contest reserved. Relax. I'm not I'm not poor. This is the truck series. That is the wrong one. This is the this is the okay. Here's the F one. So this is the winning line. It's just a fucking it's 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 esports all over again, man. I can't reiterate enough, dude. Um, anyway, this is the one that <laughs> it's so stupid, man. This one would have beat the original optimal lineup if Gasly loses a position, because that then allows Zhao to beat him by one point. Once he gets the teammate bonus. Um, anyway, that was ghastly. I entered this line twice, actually, just because it. when I was going through builds, I mean, we got we got quite lucky there, so each one you know, paid out very well. Um, but this is where I went here. I mean, here. Uh, okay, go ahead. Just well. These are mainly where I went. I knew that the punt would be viable, but you can see where, you can see where I melt and stuff. If this helps you, maybe it helps you not. I don't know. A lot of people keep asking me about F1, and I just hate covering F1, dude. Most useless shit ever. And then, uh, I mean, the science penalty was so stupid. I, oh, why? Okay, so, like, if science gets that penalty, F1, answer me this. Riddle me this, drivers. If F1, if F1, if science's penalty counts, well, then Alonzo's spin should count. It's so ridiculous here. So the whole science issue was a fucking mess. Um, but anyway, so that's that there. Um, and then League of Legends, you know, we keep having good good races there, or good, good finishes there. Um, I'll show even people when it doesn't work out yet again. So here is the... Also, I'm getting... I'm kind of dipping my toes in a little bit more into... In the league at this point, entering the ones, entering the fives. But here, here's a fantastic example of when it doesn't work out. 
Um, you know, absolutely yeah, slaughtered. All the lines are dead. All eight lines are absolutely crucified. I'm not gonna cash in this. But yet again, same approach. Just I just I I want to play the uh, the favorites and the times that it doesn't work out or the times where it works out for me more than makes up for when it doesn't work out. Um, so on and so forth there. Uh, what else? I think that's really about it. Mm. At least I think so. Anyway, very, very happy. Honestly, very, very happy with the approach. Just unfortunate there. Unfortunate with, with Byron getting spun. He didn't sink these lines, but... Or he didn't he didn't sink these lines, but most of these get moved out of the, out of the bubble with him spinning, even, even at 50 points. Um, and then the ones that had him still, you know... Just unfortunately, got spun, man. That that really fucking sucks, Dick. <laughs> that that really sucks. Um, truck series, you know, take it or leave it. It's truck series is gonna happen there. We're gonna have a lot of violence. I mean, also another thing, like, look, DFS is hard. It's difficult. I'm not saying I'm the best player. I don't even claim to be. I'm an idiot most of the time, anyway. I make mistakes and stuff, but. From my point of view, I like playing NASCAR DFS. I understand the high volatility. I understand the risks. I understand all that stuff. But I like playing the bit. I like playing GPPs. I feel comfortable playing GPPs. I like I like my approaches and stuff. Certainly this year, I I've taken a massive change. And the main reason why I did that is because I've been playing DFS since 2017, and we've had, you know, good years, bad years, you know, good contests, bad contests, same thing, same same song and dance, but I was like, dude, I haven't seen the success that I've wanted to see these last, really, you know, five years and stuff, and I mean, you could look at it in a sense of, like, you know, poker players and stuff, you know, you learn, you learn your craft, learn what you're doing, your tendencies, your tells that you need to work on, things like that. And same thing here. And so I took a step back uh, during the off season of, of NASCAR this last year. I was like, what have I not, what am I not doing, to be honest? Because, yeah, I'll have lineups that finish in the 1%, but I'm just not having that enough. What am I doing? So I've, you know, I've, I've really changed up my approach this year, and it's worked really well, both in, in a results base with contests and stuff, but even here, you know, I know, I know, you know, when you, when you look at the CSV, you know, these content, these lineups didn't do well, but I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very, very happy with the approach. It's not the approach, man. It's the variance of, of DFS and stuff, but I'm just happy with the approach and things like that. Anyway, I just wanted to make this video because I said I'd do like, you know, week review stuff and things like that. Um, and hopefully this helps anybody. You know, because I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this in terms of making content and things like that. I'd like to just keep doing this and, you know, everything. And I, and I will this year and certainly for next year and stuff. But certainly down the line, I don't know how, I, I mean, we could just have another Black Friday to where, you know, Congress decides and the government decides to take Daily Fantasy away from us. Who knows? Um, so if, this type, if these types of videos, if my content, if any of that ever helps anybody, if it just helps one person, I think it's worth it at the end of the day. Um... So anyway, that's why I uh, do this, and I will, what is it, see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching, and uh, see you guys then. Peace out.